Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Jesse Showalter and I'm really stoked today to be looking at the 10 most basic things you need to know about Affinity Designer when you first open up the program. If you didn't know, Affinity Designer is one of the new vector graphics softwares that's put out by Serif that's right now competing with the big boys like Adobe Illustrator. It's amazing, it's easy to learn, easy to understand, and it's only 50 bucks in the US for both Mac and Windows. It's perfect for new and veteran designers who are looking for a tool that can handle illustration, iconography, typography, UI design, print work, and all sorts of other amazing types of design. Affinity Designer is pretty sweet. We're gonna take a look at it and get you up and running. Let's get started. When you fire up the program, it might look very familiar to you if you've worked with any other design softwares. You have a tools panel down the left-hand side and what looks like a bunch of different panels down on the right-hand side with a layers panel, very, very standard stuff. Where Affinity Designer is really different is up here in these three tabs that they call personas. Right now we are in the draw persona. You can jump over to the pixel persona, which will show you the pixel representation of what it is that you're making. And then over here you have a separate export persona, just like they do in their sister program, Affinity Photo. I suppose the first thing you'd wanna know when you open up a program like this is how do you work in it? How do you create a new file? Well, it's just like anything else. You head up to file, and press new or you can see you can press command N for new and when you do you get the new document kind of interface where you can decide what you want it to be. Is it web? Is it print? Is it press ready? So that's how you make a new document. If you'd like to work in more of an artboard system you can simply grab the artboards and you can drag some artboards out measuring what they are and then you can even copy artboards. So if you wanted to do interface design, this would be a really, really good way to do that as well. There are ways to create reusable symbols and interface patterns here in Affinity Designer. We're not gonna go into that today, but this is how you work an artboard system if that floats your boat. Now we're gonna do a quick tour of the interface. Let's start with the tools in the tool panel on the left-hand side. You can see you have your pointer clicker arrow. Next you have that artboard tool that we talked about. This is the node tool, so that's like your white arrow tool that can command each individual node and move those around, that's nice. This is the corner tool, which works really, really well with shapes you created. Like if I drew a shape out, I could grab the corner tool and just hovering over one of the nodes, I can see I get a small arc that represents the corner. And then I could drag that corner and create a perfect radius using an ellipse to do it. A corner tool, nice. Okay, next up we have the pen tool, which is really great for drawing custom shapes with bezier curves. So that's really, really nice. You have a pencil, so you can do a little bit of custom drawing. You have a vector brush tool, so you can do some more brush type drawing. And there's lots of different brushes and things you can do there, just like an illustrator. You have a gradient tool, so you can gradiate certain things, shapes you're working on, so on and so forth. The transparency tool, you have a place image tool, a crop, vector crop tool. Then you have all of your standard shapes like squares, rectangles, ellipses, and rounded rectangle tools. But then you have custom shapes, which you can actually choose any of these other individual unique shapes like donuts, double stars, and they all have some interesting stuff you can do with them as well. You have a text tool or a typography tool that you can dra drag out typography, a color picker, a hand to move your kind of canvas around, and the zoom tool that you can either select and kind of pull in going from left to right. Up top you have the different personas that we spoke about earlier. Some ways to view things in pixels versus outlines, which is really nice. You have ways to balance and bring things forward or back, flip things around and rotate them, align things horizontally and vertically. We have snapping kind of presets that we can handle up here. You have all of your Boolean functions, which would be like your Pathfinder tools almost up there in that portion. And then down the right hand panel, you have all the different tool panels like character and color, positioning, transform, typography, and then the layers and effects and all that kind of stuff is down here on the right hand side. Of course, all of it is adjustable, so you can pull different panels out and you can place them where you want them to be. And that's pretty much the interface. We're gonna wipe away all the stuff that we've made on the canvas and we're gonna talk about some pre-made shapes. Pre-made shapes are pretty easy to understand. You can choose the square, draw it out. When you are just drawing it out, it's free form. If you hold shift, of course, you're able to kind of constrain the proportions. You can play with the fill of it, so it can either be a gradient or a color. You can choose from swatches. You can kind of upload your own swatches. And so we can choose a nice color for our shape. 
Once we have our shape, we can give it a stroke and give it a radius, absolute size, so as we're working with it in the future, you can change the corners, so on and so forth. And that's the same for quite a few of them. Each of the individual default shapes, like circles, rounded squares, and squares, have their own settings that they come with. They've done a little bit of the work for you. I feel like that's gonna be the overwhelming tone of this tutorial, is the fact that Affinity Designer has done a lot of the work for you, but it still allows you to customize, and I think that's a pretty sweet spot to be in. Any object that you make on the screen, you can grab by this little rotation handle and rotate it. The pre-made or custom shapes are very nice as well, and you could draw something like a triangle or a star as you draw that star out. All of these custom shapes, not only do they have individual properties up at the top, but you can see they also have special nodes, and when I hover over these special red nodes, I can pull in or out and manipulate the different properties of this shape. So I can make it a soft star, changing the inner and outer kind of edges of the shape. And each one of these differ on the shape that you actually pick. So if I pick the donut tool and I pick the outside, I can start actually making a nice pie chart there. Or if I grab this one, I can make it thicker or thinner. And so it just has a lot of customization where I don't have to pull out a circle and then create other shapes and use the Pathfinder tools to chop them the way they should be. A lot of those things are already thought of for you and I like that. Next thing we should know is how to use colors. If you draw out a shape onto the screen and we move it kind of like nice there in the middle, I'm gonna turn on the snapping rule so you can see as I snap around, it puts it exactly where I want it. As you use colors, there's a lot of different ways to use colors. I can use them I can have no fill whatsoever, so I can make something empty. I can pick out of the swatches. I can use the color sliders, like different CMYK or, or RGB sliders. If I wanna put in a specific hex value, I can do that as well. Um, if I wanna pull the hex value, I can pull it out of that little box. I can add gradients with multiple different stops inside of it, and you can adjust the stops and the different colors involved. How you want that gradient to be applied, and just all the details about color. So that's really, really nice. You have your own specific color tab over here, and I really like their color picker, actually. It's really fun to work with. I wish it was a little bit bigger, but that's okay. So um, if I grab something, instead of giving it this gradient, I can come over to my color picker, and I can choose like what I want the hue or the value of the color to be, and then I can spin the triangle around and it's like your own personal color wheel. And I just really like that. It gives you all of the HSL values down the side. You can flip flop, obviously. You can use your color picker by just dragging it out and identifying something and then giving it that color. Like for instance, if I wanted to grab the color of the Affinity logo, I could just drag it over, release. If I wanna apply that color to the shape that I have on my artboard, I just click it and it applies it from the eyedropper tool. The next thing you gotta understand is layers. If you've never worked in a design software, the majority of them have a layer system where I can create a shape and then create another shape and insert a photo. And all of these are working on different layers. You can see them over in the layers panel. As you're working with the layer, you can change that layer's opacity value. You can change its blending modes. You can manipulate them by turning them on or off, locking it so it can't be moved. And you can also apply effects and styles to each one of the layers. I think the real interesting thing is how the layers panel actually functions. It actually has dimension to it. So if I wanted to put this text down below, I would drag it and make sure it's on the very outer edge. That's put that piece of text all the way behind. I could move it back up by doing the same thing by making sure that the highlighted blue edge or blue line is all the way over. If I indent, what that's actually telling Affinity Designer is that I actually want that to be clipped or merged onto the shape itself. You can see I could twirl open the donut layer and I can select the text and move it around and it's been masked inside of the donut. I can remove it by pulling it out and putting it where it belongs just right there. And that's how layers work. They're a little bit more touchy. It takes a little bit of getting used to if you're used to other design softwares. The next thing we're gonna talk about is combining shapes using all the Boolean tools, or what we might call the Pathfinder tools. And this allows us to merge shapes 
into each other in interesting ways. So I'm just gonna draw a few shapes out here. Here's a square and here is an ellipse. And I'm just gonna make one of them a, a little bit of a different color and I wanna merge these two shapes together. I wanna do it in an interesting way though. I'm just gonna grab both layers and I'm gonna use my alignment tools to make sure they're lined up. And then I'm gonna move it into the middle and using my snapping guide, snap it right into the middle. Now, I, I can select both items and I can come up here and here's my pathfinder or my Boolean tools. I can add them to each other, I can combine them to make them one shape. You can see what would happen if, if I just laid the shape here, grabbed both of them, and then combine them into one shape. It's gone ahead and merged the actual vector points and turned it into a single shape rather than two shapes. That is a destructive process, which means that you can't edit it anymore. So you definitely wanna make sure that that's what you want to do. Subtracting is gonna take the topmost layer and actually knock out what was there from the shape below and leave you with a subtracted view of what you once had. If we use the intersect tool, we're only going to get the portion of the shapes that have actually intersected in front of each other, and now we have a custom shape that we've made. If you use the divide tool, you're telling Affinity Designer to chop the pieces up where they actually meet. And so now I can see instead of having two shapes, I have three shapes, and I have the bottom portion and the top portion, and it's done the same thing. It's divided all of them and left the gap there in its wake. The last one is the combine function, and that might sound confusing, like, like it's similar to add, but combining is different than adding. You can get some really interesting kind of results by combining shapes. What you're doing is anything that's laying over it is gonna knock it out, and anything that's not laying over it, like if I took this shape over here and combined the whole thing, now I have one shape, and it's done some of that subtraction as well as creating one unique shape all at the same time. Now this is no longer an individual shape, but it does have individual nodes. And you can see as I pull them in and overlap, I can get some really funky results there as well. The next thing we touched on lightly earlier, but we want to learn a little bit more in depth how to actually draw your own vector shapes. There's a few ways that we covered during the user interface tour that we can draw custom shapes. The first one is the most famous vector drawing tool there is known to man, and that is the pen tool, where I can grab the pen tool and I can start clicking nodes on the screen. By clicking and bending, I can create really nice bezier curves using the pen tool. You can always come back and there's a lot of key commands that I won't cover here, but I'll cover in another video. But the pen tool is there for you in Affinity Designer and I think it makes it pretty simple to use. Next we have the pencil tool, which we spoke about briefly, but the pencil tool is a way to add quick vector shapes to the screen and there's no telling where the vector points actually go. The software itself is actually judging where the best place is to put the curve so that if you wanted to come back with the node tool, you could move them around and always edit them later. Last is the vector brush tool. You can get that by either clicking the tool itself or pressing the hotkey of B. And once I do that, I get a brush that I can paint things out. I can use the bracket keys, the left and the right bracket, to change the size of my brush. I can also change the different types of brushes that I use by coming up to the brush tool panel and choosing different brushes, like calligraphy brushes, or grainy brushes, or even really kind of atrocious chain brushes. The next thing you're probably gonna to wanna to know is how to add text in Affinity Designer. And that's as simple as grabbing the text tool. There's two kinds. There's the artistic text tool and there's the frame text tool. They have subtle differences. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna use the artistic text tool. You can do it one of two ways, simply by clicking and adding the current size and setup of the text you were using previously, start adding text. Or you can grab the text tool and you can click and drag and it will change dynamically the size of the text as you release it. And now I can write hello in a little bit more of a manageable font size. You can work here in the contextual panel across the top or you can come to the character panel and you can edit everything about your text from style to underlines and strike throughs. You can work through all the ligatures and everything you'd need to have really in-depth typography. It's all there. The tools are very comprehensive. You can play with all of those on your own. I won't run through all of them. Last thing you might wanna do is save and export your designs, of course, so that people can see them out in the real world. We have this beautiful design on the canvas right now that says hello, and if I wanna export that and send it out to my client, I can head up to file and save it as an Affinity Designer file. I can also just save as and have some generic type of like save there, or I can export. I can click the export, which the hotkey is, 
Command, Option, Shift, S is that age old like crow's claw that you have to do to export things. And as I do that, I get different settings. I can export it as a PNG, as a GIF, TIFFs, PSDs, PDFs, SVGs, EPSs, all sorts of settings there for you in your export. The last way to export things is to actually head over to the export persona. You can draw slices around individual elements and export them simply by clicking the export button in the layers panel. You can export things out as different file sizes and different resolutions for different purposes, even exporting it out as JSON code to make an SVG or do other things with developers. It's all here in Affinity Designer's really, really comprehensive export settings that I think is pretty awesome. Well, that's it. That's the 10 basic things you need to know when you open up Affinity Designer. I think Affinity Designer is a really easy to use, easy to learn, and comprehensive design software. And I hope that this tutorial helped you get up and running. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I like to make a lot of content about design and development and products just like this one. So maybe stick around. I hope you guys are having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing stuff. I hope you're making amazing stuff. And I hope you're choosing the software that's right for you. See you in the next one.